All right, let's get on with it. Let's turn this down a little. This red sauce I came up with, as always, ingredients and recipe will be listed down below. There you go. Get a healthy dose of that. I'll keep a little bit for later just in case I need to flavor it, flavor the soup a little bit more. Alright, so while that's going, let's go ahead and throw in the cabbage on this side here. This is just regular Napa cabbage. Alright, I'm so actually going to grab some fish cake here. That already looks so good. I want to make sure that beef is nice and crispy before I pour in the water. I actually saw this recipe on Facebook. It was late at night, I was just scrolling through and I saw this on, I think it's called Koo Cat. Whatever, I just saw the recipe, I loved it, I couldn't wait to to at least cook it for you guys and give it a try. I know you've probably seen a lot of versions of this, but I like what they've done. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow that. Coconut juice. Mm. I love coconut juice with all those little bits in it, do you see? So refreshing. All right, let's see here. to pour in the water. Turn this up. All right, I'm gonna add some rice cake. You know what this is. This is dok, dok. I hope I'm saying it right. I'll be laughing at me. There was one more. Some more cabbage. That's really good. Actually, I'm gonna add a little bit more of this sauce here. So don't be afraid to add more if you need to. All right, now that's boiling, actually what I'm gonna do now it started boiling, I'm going to add in my ramen. Uh, pick that up. Get that in there. Alright, 
And one last thing, just to top it all off, we'll do the egg. All right, guys. And I've got some of this here, some radish. You know what that is. All right, I think I am going to dig in. I'm gonna turn this down. Oh, dude, this looks so good. Some fish cake, rice cake. Ooh. Get some of that brisket. I can't wait to try this. Mm. Oh my God. You guys, this is incredible. Mm. Sorry if you hear some noise. I have the windows open. It's a warm California day again. Mmm. Mmm. Fish cake. Mmm. So freaking bomb. Mmm. <clears throat> Spicy. I'm glad it added more of that red sauce. Mmm. Still see that egg right there. Oh, I cracked it. Looks amazing. Hmm. I think the number one thing people usually ask is how it is that we handle piping hot food. I think people often wonder if we're insane for doing it. But you obviously know the art of slurping, right? Like this. And the reason why that is so helpful is because while you're slurping, what are you doing? You're pretty much 
inhaling air. So as air goes into your mouth while you have your food in there, it cools it down. So it is a cooling technique that we often use to cool down the food. Mm. So sometimes people wonder, well, why do you guys slurp chicken? I don't know. Fried chicken. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we're just used to it. A lot of Asian foods are noodle based um, noodle soups, you know? So I just think we're used to it. Sometimes I blow food that's not even hot. Like I go, <laughs> but it's cold just because I'm so used to doing that. Mmm, that egg. Okay, I have to bring this up to you guys. So I was talking to a friend earlier via FaceTime. I used to work with her way back, long ago. She's in a situation where she's kind of, she's dating this guy. That's loaded. He's got money. But her thing is that <clears throat> she's not really attracted to him. I listen to her because I'm very interested. I'm very fascinated by, you know, like just that whole, I guess, type of relationship. I saw it all the time working at Louis Vuitton. You know, and I just want to say, I, I don't like to generalize all couples to make it seem like they, you know, certain people are money hungry or whatever the case. But in this case though, I mean, she's dating someone who is much, much older than her. And, but the thing is that she likes all the good stuff. She likes all the good things that money can buy. She's not a bad person. It's just, she got caught up in that. Whatever the case, I, I, I guess it doesn't matter since you don't really know her, but I thought to myself, like, would I ever catch myself in that situation? Would I ever date someone for money? Even if I'm not attracted to them. That's a tough one. I mean, we all like money, but I think I would hope at least half of us or most of us have some dignity, right? But I must say, I'm actually very attracted to the idea, though. <clears throat> but the thing with me that... I guess, so, I guess my answer is, I, yes, I think I would, but it wouldn't last for longer than maybe a month. We all like money. I like money. I mean, I like to know that I'm secure. That's pretty much all it is. And everything else is just icing on the cake. But... I can't possibly imagine myself being with someone I am not physically or sexually attracted to. Now, even in the case, let's say for example, 
Um, oh, it is so hot in here and I'm eating some spicy food. I'm losing my mind. So let's say that this person that I'm dating has money and is attractive, right? But still happens to be older. Well, personally for me, I know people always say age is nothing but a number. But for me, age is important because I find that back back in the day when I dated much older guys, like even, even their 40s, I would say we didn't have much in common. You know, like we, I would try my best to be interested in the things he was talking about, but I really, truly wasn't, you know? That's sad. I guess but at the end of the day for me, I'm in it for love. So if you happen to have money and we happen to fall in love, that's super cool. Like amazing. But if you don't have money and we fall in love, that's okay too. It's not a big deal. But I just know some people can move on with their lives just dating someone because they're financially secure. Um, even if they don't love that person. It happens all the time. It's so common. Um, and at the mall that I worked at, it was so common, you would see it almost every single day. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a secret. Yeah. Do not judge me for this. This rice cake is everything right here. To me right now. Mmm. Oh yeah, I was gonna tell you. Back in the day when AOL was around, and I know some of you know what AOL is, there are chat rooms and there are um, instant messaging, all that good stuff that you can do on this um, program online program anyways so we're in this chat room you know i'm i'm there almost every single day and it's a chat room to meet other men right but l let me tell you i was 15 at that time i was very young and not like thank god my parents didn't speak english but they weren't able to install any um install anything where they can actually keep kids from looking at specific material or being able to log in certain sites. Bad. Do that if you have children. But my parents didn't do that, so I got away with a lot of things. So I would talk to these guys in these chat rooms, and I'm gonna be very honest with you. Some of them were in their 30s, like 35, sometimes 20s, Whatever the case, they were over 18. And what does that mean? That means that I was what you call jailbait. And, um, but the funny thing here, here, here's a funny thing. I know that if they had ever decided to meet me, which I want to tell you now, none of them actually met me in person, but if they were actually to meet me, if they were to meet me, it would be a problem because I was the one who was pushing it. I was the one who wanted it to happen. I was the one who wanted to do things, explore, whatever. I was curious. I was young. So with that said, I could have basically got these people, these men, in trouble. 
that's a scary thought because now that the roles, the ages have reversed, now in my 30s, I cannot imagine doing that. Like that disgusts me. So I just think it's crazy now that you think about it. So it, it leads me to believe that those guys that I've been talking to are, I don't know, are they predators? I don't know what it is, but I did that bullshit thing too. Dating for me started very early and I was bad. I was doing it the bad way. Um, I would lie too about my age saying that I was 18, blah, 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 but really I was 15 or 16. So now what's scary is that knowing that we have these phones and you know, every teenager has one, you can only imagine what they're doing with the sexting, with the Snapchatting, whatever. I guess it's okay, but I, in the situation that I grew up in, it's kind of, oh, it's a touchy subject. So, bad, bad kid. Do not raise your children like me. Tell them to watch my video and say, do not grow up like this child here, this man here. He's terrible, 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 terrible. But the thing is, I know I'm not alone. Mm -mm -mm. I know there's more people out there. Honestly, I'm not really sure why I was so desperate to be in a relationship. But I think at such a young age, we are so needy. We need attention. You would think that I didn't get attention from my parents, but I sure did. But I wanted more, obviously. I mean, that's around the time puberty hits too, so. All these crazy hormones. And the thing was, they would always be long distance because I don't know, I just never ended up talking to anybody that was in California. There was one person I was I talked to for a long time. He was actually from Texas. I remember his name, Eric. Hmm. You know how back in the day, how we had landlines? And again, my parents still could not figure it out. I used the landline to call out of state. And you know all the charges for calling out of state. You would see the bill. And one time, she actually went into my room, my mom. She was like, what is this? Why is this so expensive? Why is the bill so expensive this month? Who are you calling? And I would just play it off like, I don't know, I don't know what's... Just ask, you know, I was like saying, ask my brothers. I was trying to play it off, but yeah, I was on that phone for hours. for hours trying to make some long distance bullshit happen. Let's see here. I got some sauce on my shirt. See, I knew, but I should have known better. Anyways, who cares? Um, Are you in a long distance relationship? I know actually a lot of you guys are. I want to tell you something. Long distance relationships are very, very complicated. I mean, it, it takes two very strong, emotionally strong individuals to agree to have one. I, I just don't... I. I guess 
I would be really amazed to hear any of you guys if you if you've had a lasting relationship. Now, maybe eventually you guys met, met with each other, but I mean, if you had a long distance relationship for two, three, three plus years, oh my gosh, let me know. I will crown you guys. I mean, with long distance too, I guess you can call each other and talk to each other every day, which is what I did, but you can only do that so much. And at least with today, with FaceTime, and you, there's a lot of technologies you can use to, to be able to see the person that you're talking to, but sometimes it's just not enough, you know? And I think at... At some point, you're just gonna be super sick and tired of talking about how your day was. How was your day? Good. What did you do? Nothing. Worked. I don't know. Worked out. It just gets so redundant every single day. And you're just being courteous to each other. You're just being nice to each other, calling each other and making sure that, um, you know, you get to say, how are you? You know, your hellos and good nights and all that good jazz. But it does get to be really repetitive and the worst part I guess the most important okay I guess the problem here with long distance is that right you need to be physical with each other um, you know those moments on the phone when you're with them and it's kind of silent because you have nothing else better to say um, or you ran out of things to talk about that's when being physical is important that's when seeing each other face-to-face -face is super important, right? Because that kind of fills in all the holes. Now you get to kind of create memories with each other physically. And that obviously includes sex. That includes going to the beach together, um, driving the car together, you know, living with each other. There's all those things are missing. And I think that's where it's hard. It's not because long distance relationships can't last or they're not a good idea. It's just I mean, the work you have to put in it is immense. But listen, if you found your love and they happen to be outside of this country, um, or state for me, obviously in the United States, then that's okay. You figured it out. But I don't think most people are able to do that. So I commend you. I'm thinking about you. Isn't it awkward when you guys run out of things to say? It's so weird, it's like dead silent. But you want to be nice and you want to be there. Okay. Mm. I am not done with this meal. That's why I have this rice here. So this is like day old rice. Always use day old rice when you do some sort of stir fry. Let's heat that up. All right, and some bean sprouts. All right, we'll wait that for that to heat up. Mmm. 
charred. It's perfect. This off. I gotta have some of the seafood, uh, seaweed. All right, so I have that seaweed. So I got that seaweed. Let's go in and dig in. Ah. It's funny because like I'm no relationship expert, but I think I've been around town <laughs> enough to know, I guess to under my, understand myself when it comes to dating and all that good stuff. I think I, the one thing that people always ask me or talk to me about is, I guess maybe if you're new, like getting in some sort of new relationship or maybe you're dating around or whatever the case. Let's just say you're dating around. Um, what people often tell me is that, you know, hey, I just don't know if um, he's like really into me because he's not, you know, he's always telling me that he's busy, he's not showing up or you know, he doesn't want to come over or he's too tired after work or vice versa with a girl, right? Um, And let's just say this is just a few weeks in of dating, you know? Honestly, from my personal experience, I I found that no burrito. Sorry, this is so good. Give me just a moment. Mmm, 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 mmm. This meal was terrific. So anyways, let's say you're maybe two weeks in, right? And if you run into an issue where, you know, you're concerned about whether or not this person is really interested in you and you're really, you're really confused about their actions, saying that they're too busy and that they're tired from work, yada, yada, yada. From my experience, dating, you know, meeting new people all the time the ones that i was mostly attracted to and that i actually really 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 liked i found that i would make any effort to see them right doesn't matter if i got off work at 12 a.m doesn't matter if what i have homework assignments it doesn't it really doesn't matter it doesn't matter even if i had a test the next day even though I should care. But even for a moment, I wanted to see them, 
or whoever I was dating at that time, even for just a moment, even if I drove by their house, for them to go into my car and just to say hello, and then a peck on, you know, on the mouth, and that's it. Just a good night kiss, and that's it. You drive home. It is so worth it when you're, when you're really into someone. So, and I would obviously, and I obviously had the same type of treatment from the, uh, you know, from whoever I was dating too. So it would go both ways. Like we would always try to find a way to make time, regardless of what time it is, because we were so obsessed with each other. And that's why I'm often concerned when I have friends telling me that, you know, this guy, this and that, blah, blah, blah. He's just always making excuses. And the truth is, is that maybe he's just not, maybe he's just not that into you. And I, I know that sounds cliche, but it could be the truth too. I just, I want you to find someone who's completely obsessed with you, even if it was just the first few weeks of dating. That is a sure sign. As long as you feel the same way, of course, as long as it's mutual. Don't, don't date anyone who's just kind of like crazy obsessed with you and you don't feel the same way. But you know what I mean. It has to be a two-way road. It takes two to tango. And if you know that it's natural and it's feeling good and that both parties are making the effort, that could be the one that you, you know, could end up with in a relationship or whatever the case. But oftentimes I hear that. I personally know right away when someone's, they're interested, but they're not super interested. I, you just, you could just tell, you know, and sometimes you just have to stop pursuing it. But sometimes, I guess, some people like the chase. I don't know. The, that, that wasn't me. So I'm just giving you an example of my life and how I've been able to just kind of decipher it. Dating is so complex. That's why there are so many people afraid to do it. It's like an ultimate test of your social skills, being able to survive that first date, right? Nervous as hell, all those butterflies. Listen, at the end of the day, I just want to be fed and fucked. It's pretty simple. I should be easy to date. It's pretty simple to do. Put a spoon in my mouth. And after you do that, you can throw me on the kitchen counter, take off my shirt, kiss me on my neck, pull my underwear to the side and do whatever the fuck you want to do. But feed me first, right? Food, ooh! Steak dinner, you can do anything you want. McDonald's, uh, you'll, get, uh, you'll get first base. It does depend. Pay that good money for a good time. Mmm. This meal was incredible.
It is official. Chun can cook. <sighs> you guys, that was amazing. Check out the recipe down below. Hopefully you'll be able to give it a try. I know you've seen this a lot of times already, especially for mukbang, but I'm glad you could actually see me eat it. So thank you so much for your time. Hope you got some crazy relationship tips today. Please don't let your children do what I did. Make sure those teenagers, make sure you're watching over them because they're doing some skank ass shit. I did some skank ass shit. But I've learned my lesson. I'm an adult now. Can't do that. I love you guys. I will see you next time. Bye.